Hello again. As promised in the last video, I'm going to make a small number of very short videos showing specific uh, utility functions that I use. And so this is the first of those videos. I'm going to try to keep it nice and short. And I'm starting with the simplest of the functions I use, which is the is new bar. Now, you may have seen me use this many times before. I have made some improvements, mainly to handle multi time frame and multi symbol. So if you have seen this before, and you just want to catch up on the improvements for the multi time frame and multi symbol, then follow the chapter indicators below and skip forward. But for now, I've written a very short example expert advisor here. It actually doesn't do any trading. It simply calls the is new bar function. And then if this is a new bar, it prints a message here just to show the time. Uh, and that time isn't necessarily going to be the start time for the bar because the tick may not happen for a few seconds into the bar. But this will at least print a message at the beginning of each new bar, at the first tick of each new bar. Uh, as I say here, I'm calling is new bar once in the on init just to set up the is new bar. But let me just write the code and it'll make a bit more sense. So here I've started bool is new bar returns false. Okay. Right now, first step, I have this static date time variable that I'm calling previous time. Static variables are initialized with this value when they are first used. But after that, each time I call this function, they, the static variable will have the same value that it had when the function finished the time before. And so I'm going to use that to remember what the previous time was in this function. Uh, then I've got a current time and I'm using the iTime function with the chart symbol and the chart period and bar number zero. And that gives me the start time of the current bar on the current chart. Okay, so in this line, I'm comparing that previous time with the current time and returning false if they are the same, because that means that I haven't moved on to a new bar. This is also why in the on init, I'm calling is new bar, because when previous time is initialized, it's initialized to zero. That would mean that the first time I call this function, it's going to return true because the current time is always going to be after time zero. If you don't want your expert advisor to trigger because maybe you're right in the middle of a four hour candle, for example, when you start this, then you need to call the is new bar function once in on init, and that will set previous time to be the same as the current time, which is the start of the current bar. And then your expert advisor won't actually run the new bar until that four hour candle finishes and the next four hour candle opens. So after we've executed that test, there's only one thing left to do. And that is to reset the previous time to be the current time because they were different. Now I want them to be the same again and then return true because that means we've had a new candle. So that's all that I need to do for the standard is new bar function that if you've seen any of my other videos, you've probably seen this many times before. Let me compile that to make sure I haven't made a mistake there. No errors. And just to demonstrate that I'm running it just over two days from the 1st of July to the 3rd of July on a four hour Euro USD chart. I'll turn on visual mode and there we can see a message time is 1st of July 0, 1st of July 0, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 0, 4, 8 and 12. And I don't know why the test has stopped there but if I look at that candle the last candle on the chart here is 12. So I don't know why it didn't run till the end of the day. That's my basic example. So now let's move on to example number two. And this is where I'm going to show how to handle multi-symbol, multi-time frame. Now this is all ready to go. I've uh, got all of the same code that I had written in example number one, down to the is new bar. Because I'm going to run multi-time frame, I'm actually not going to bother with multi-symbol. You'll see how the code would work for multi-symbol and multi-time frame. It's easier to do just one symbol and just change the time frame. So I need an input for that. So I'm just going to set the alternate time frame at the one hour. And now I'll make the change to the is new bar function. And I'm going to do that by splitting it into two different functions. So 
So what I've done here, I've taken the static date time previous time and left that in a function that's still called is new bar. And then I've created a new function is new bar that accepts inputs of symbol time frame and the previous time. And you'll see that I'm passing this by reference so that if I change previous time inside this function, it gets returned here. So I'm still using the static previous time. If I call is new bar then for the default, which has no arguments, then I will get just as I did before, is new bar based on the current symbol and time frame, and it will remember that previous time for next time. But if I want to use it in a multi time frame situation, then I want to be able to call with something other than the chart symbol and period. So I've got a second function which actually accepts the symbol and the time frame that I want to test this for, and it will return an updated previous time. So it's now my responsibility outside this function to keep track of that previous time. But internally here, all the code is the same except that I've replaced the chart symbol and period with the input symbol and time frame from this function call. So to use this in the expert, I'm going to create a global variable to hold that alternate previous time. So there is my global variable, previous time alternate. I'm initializing it to zero here, just in case it has some value that might cause things to go wrong. I want to know that it starts with a known value and not just whatever was left in memory. So I'm initializing it to zero. And then I'm calling that is new bar, passing in the chart symbol. And this could be an alternate symbol as well, if you're running a multi-symbol system, but I'm just using the chart symbol here. Uh, and I'm using the alternate time frame to demonstrate this and passing in that previous time alternate. So we, after this call, that will have the start time for the current bar for this time frame. And now in on tick, I'll just demonstrate the use of it there as well. So not a big difference in the message here. I'm just going to print the alternate time is. And when I run, I should see this coming up every hour and this message every four hours. So I'm going to run on the four hour chart again. So here ready for the test. I've changed to is new bar example two. I'm still running on a four hour chart. I've turned off the visual just to make it a little quicker to run. In the inputs, the alternate time frame is one hour. So I'm running on a four hour chart with an alternate time frame of one hour. I go to the journal and start this. And you can see the messages here. The time is, so that's the message coming from the chart time changing, that's 1600. And then every hour I also get alternate time is 16, 17, 18, 19. So I'm testing both of those. That's basically it for the function and the improvement to show the is new bar based on an alternate symbol or time frame. But I just want to do one more step, and that is simply to show a way that you might use this. Think of it more as a suggested uh, method of operation. So here I am in example three. I've still got the input for the alternate time frame. I want to get rid of this global variable. So what I'm going to do is create a new function again. So just like the default is new bar, I have a static variable for the previous time and I have the is new bar function being called with the symbol. In this case, the alternate time frame input and that static previous time variable. These are in two different functions. So this previous time is not the same as this previous time. And by doing that, and it's a small change, you might not want to worry about this. I can get rid of a global variable because I don't need that. And then here, instead of initializing the global variable and then calling the isNewBar with all of these functions, I just call 
is new bar alternate time frame. And that also means that here in on tick, I call is new bar alternate time frame. And all I've really achieved from that, I suppose, is that this previous time is no longer a global variable. It's embedded here. Um, you may find it better to work one way or the other, but I'll just demonstrate this to prove that it actually works. Or is new bar example three. Input is still an alternate time frame of one hour, and I'm still running on a four hour chart. Just clear the journal and run that, and I'm getting the same results that I had before. I get the time is every four hours, that's at uh, 8 p.m. on the 1st of July, and then every hour I'm getting the alternate time frame is, or the alternate time is. So that's it, um, a simple function. I just wanted to show that to you, and I'll be referencing this any time in future, so I won't bother to describe that function. I'll be referencing this video. Uh, next up, I'll be showing the video on how to normalize volumes correctly. So if this has been useful, leave a like, and if you want to see more videos, click subscribe, click the bell icon to be notified when I release the next video. Thank you for watching.